Okay, so thank you and welcome to CSM TAC. I'm Peter Briggs, and here I've got with me is former Burnley chairman, Barry Kilby. Hi, Barry. Hi, hi, Pete. How are you doing? You all right? Um, yes, you, I'm you fine, just, thank you. Good, good. Can you just give us two minutes of your time to tell us um, your, your past and how you got to being Burnley chairman, please? Oh, my goodness. Right, well, uh, strange past, actually. I tried... Uh, to make it as a footballer, believe it or not. I joined uh, Burnley in 67, and uh, that was good. I thought that might be my career. And uh, so I got, you know, went to Burnley. Uh, my usual joke now is I joined with Martin Dobson, and uh, Martin went on to play for England, and I went on to play for Padium. And uh, uh, I didn't make it, but I went into the... Uh, into the lottery office that sold, you know, cards and everything like that. And that's where my sort of like career started, if you will. And, uh, and, fr and from there, I, um, you know, I, I went selling cards to different football clubs. Uh, I was employed, but then I went and, and started on my own. And uh, I was uh, doing the same thing, supplying lottery tickets to, to clubs. But I got into uh, uh, also the promotional games with newspapers. And I, I, it was a, a market that really boomed. And uh, I was just in a good position. I knew how, how things worked, et cetera, et cetera. So I did with all the tabloids, Sun Bingo, Daily Mirror. Uh, I did the Times. I invented a game called Times Portfolio for the Times. Uh, and also it was a product that could be exported all around the world because those sort of skills aren't really with countries like Germany or, or the USA or whatever. Um, so that gave me a worldwide uh, market. From there, um, uh, I was uh, had a partnership with a company called GTEC in America that applied all the lottery terminals for lotteries. And they they wanted to do uh, games on television where people bought cards through their terminals. And so I, I did a partnership with them and it went really great, particularly in Eastern Europe and all around where we had game shows and people also bought tickets that I produced via their terminals. Um, and the people at home played while watching the game show on television. Uh, long story short, uh, they approached me uh, 98, 798, to buy my company. It was based in Blackburn. And uh, I sold out to them in, in 98. And that was gave me my money then to invest in, in, in where I wanted to go. And Burnley Football Club came up. And uh, so it was then that I went and I invested in Burnley. Was that always like a aspiration to go and invest in Burnley? Um, in, in a way, I mean, obviously, uh, I was a lifelong Burnley fan. My dad was a fanatical uh, Burnley fan uh, since, you know, the 1930s, and he followed them away into Europe and all that sort of thing. I'd had that little history where I tried to make it with Burnley. So when the chance came, it was that, me getting my money from my buyer to the company and it coincided the club were in real severe uh, financial uh, problems the bank were, were demanding repayments of a three million bill um they were looking around for, for for somebody to come in and it was just to me you know something that i really wanted to do and i went in and uh, took control of the club that had been 19 1999 it was so and it was something that I really wanted to do and I identified with being a you know a Burnley fan all my life because that would have been just you know you would just have Chris Waddle had walked out 98 um and all that and I think the club was in a bit of chaos wasn't it it, it was absolute chaos yeah as I say the bank were looking to, were demanding money back um <laughs> even more Stan Turner was the manager and uh, he'd fallen out with the directors and they weren't speaking to each other. 
the club were floundering uh, down at the bottom of the third uh, division of English football. It looked like it was going to drop back down to the fourth where it had been hovering around uh, for the past bloody 20 years nearly. Mm. Obviously, the famous Orient game where we nearly went out of the, uh, uh, the league altogether. So it, it was there for, you know, to build on, but I inherited Stan. And uh, it, it, it was a real strange, you know, thing to sort of come in on that and, uh, and, and take it from there. What changes did you start making when you took over? As, uh, well, it, it, it was a real, uh, the club was strange in a way. It was, they didn't have any much senior management, if that's the case. Um, the directors dabbled in different things. One would do the shop. One would do, you know, uh, the, the catering or something. And there was no real management. And it was obvious that, that they were part-timers that, that did their own thing. And the first thing I did was bring people in, uh, wanted to come in, be, be full-time. It was their job and they were responsible for it. And that was a, a big change at Burnley when people were just dabbling around and, you know, uh, it had to be put on a proper on a proper structure. Mm. Um, and also get a, a chief exec in as well who, who would oversee it and report back to the board, not the board trying to run it on this part-time basis. Okay. Was that... Um, was that Edmonton, was it? Was it Edmonton? Was your first? No, Dave Edmondson. No, it was before him. It was a guy called Andrew Watson that came Andrew in. Watson. Okay. And yes. he came in as he came in as uh, as um, uh, the new chief executive. So I worked closely with him. On the other side, um, Stan was a was a good manager. Very strict disciplinarian. Wanted its own way. That's not bad dealing with these footballers, etc. And uh, you know, we were on a proper footing then to try and pull it together and, and you know, manage it properly, both on the playing side and then on, on the commercial side, if you will. So, so strong leadership in both those two, two key... Strong leadership, um, what was needed. And forward. they reported to me, not me trying to damn well pick yeah. the team on Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they're responsible for it, for their own actions. They get the praise or they get the criticism and they know that. So that that was a, the real big uh, big change, and uh, it, it, you know we we did pull up, we did get away from relegation. Uh, I did a share, I did a share issue uh, rather than put the club in debt, of which I took uh, over seventy five percent. But other people came and invested as well. Yeah. So we 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 launched a share issue. I didn't want us saddled with debt. So that, that money came in to pay off the bank, to, to give us some money there, to bring players in. Uh, we bought Steve Davis pretty quickly mm. for 750 and, you know, rejuvenated the whole place that was really going down, going down the hill rapidly. Was he one of your key, first key um, purchases, was it? Uh, yes, he was. Talked yeah. to Stan. I need a strong defender. Uh, just from memory, he was at Luton. Um, yeah, and uh, we went, and he was. It was the first signing. We brought him in. I think it was seven fifty. Was yeah. big money for Burnley, that you know, in those days. And uh, yeah, he came in, and that was the start. Then, and, and Stan really built it up well. To be fair to him, um, he understood the game. Uh, you know, and it it, it 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 we started to prove that I came in. I came in at. Uh, uh, just, just, just short of Christmas, and then we 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 stopped up in the season, and then obviously, I, you know, we built it from there. And the following season, we got promoted into, into the championship. So when you took over the football club, you probably would have assessed like Stan's um, ability whether he was going to be your man moving forward. I'll, I assume you know the new. Um, Chairman Alan Pace, probably yes. from the same with Sean Dice to a certain extent, um, and you and obviously you've had many managers subsequently. So you know Steve Cottrell, um, Eddie Howe, um, um, 
yeah, Owen, um, Owen Coyle, sorry. Brian Laws. Brian, Brian Laws, Laws in there. And, and Sean Dash. So how do you measure them? What, what criteria were you measuring them against? Um, well, obviously the track record uh, after Stan went, obviously who I inherited, uh, choosing the following managers. First things first, you get your candidates in and just see who's, who's, who's putting up for the job. And I think the track record is your first thing you look at, what have they done? You know, uh, you get a in, in the within the football family, you, you get views on them from anywhere. But the big thing is obviously the interviews you have. Uh, you'd narrow it down from, oh gosh, 20 odd usually put in to be the manager down to a final six. And that's when you'd have the intense uh, um, in, uh, meetings with them. And uh, a lot of it. You, you know, it would be like just your own personal feeling in a way. Could he work at a club like ours? And, you know, answering the questions about budgets and what do you think went wrong at our club now? And really, that's the sort of thing you okay. would do. But in a way, still at the end of the day, you go on gut instinct for the one you think, did yeah, Sean I think he's the one. Did Sean bring in a PowerPoint presentation? Yeah, one or two did. And that's a very big plus. I mean, Sean did. He did a great PowerPoint uh, presentation. Um, and he'd only done half a season at Watford, so his history wasn't strong. But he came over really well as knowing his stuff. A power, a power presentation, this, 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 this. I think you should do this. He'd done his homework. And he was an outstanding candidate. And boy, did we win with Sean. Yes, yeah, very, very well. Yeah. Um, how, how did you use your previous management skills? You know, when you were in your scratch card, um, <laughs> manage, uh, you know, the company, and how did you bring that across into football? What, what sk key skills did you bring across with you? Oh, gosh. Well, I'm a salesman to start with. So I think my relationship with men, with, you know, the managers or whatever it was in the business, is, is to, to talk to people and get them to trust me and, you know, always tell the truth as well. And I think, you know, I think those management skills, you know, the accountancy stuff and everything like that, you've got to know it all, of course, but you know what football's like. It's so many dealing with people person to person and dealing with the damn agents that will come in and all that sort of thing. It's the personal skills, I think, that are re were really important uh, to, to, to like, you know, get the club moving. And that's very much what I'm down to being an, an ex, as you say, they're a bingo card salesman. Mm -hmm. I and, didn't say bingo, I didn't say bingo. <laughs> well, you know, that was a, that was a big one, yeah. So I, I think it's, it, it's, 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 it's getting to feeling for people and obviously uh, bringing them on board, um, but knowing your stuff as well, of course. Yeah. And so that's the basic thing that I, I do when you say management skills. Um, and, and a football club is a strange animal, as you know, with the fans and everything like that, where everything's great when you're winning. It's absolute rubbish if you're losing. Mm. So there's always that thing that's, that's floating around in the background. Um, when you came to manage like key individuals like Stan or Sean, even... Or in Coriola, I think it's quite a hard-headed um, individual. How how did you deal with them individually? Did you did you al allow their ego to go, and then you could just like feed into that, or how how did you manage them individually? Oh gosh, how, how did their legal ego to go? A little bit, but really, always tell the truth. I think that's you know, criticize criticize when they've done wrong, but praise when they've done well. And I think they all seem to get on to that. I've had a good relationship with all my managers, really. You've always got to keep in mind that you are probably going to sack them one day. So there's always that one floating around. And at the end, and, you know, and at the end of the day, so much depends just on a football enter, entering the net. Mm. Um, but yeah. and the look it, of that. It, you know, it's not like a proper business in a way like that. Mm. Uh, this thing that's there but I think it's building trust 
and and as I say, always telling the truth and getting their views and telling them when you think they're wrong, but also praising them when they're right. Can we can we just delve into Brian Laws and that whole scenario? So you know the decision making uh, process to to get Brian in the football club because he was unproven in the Premier League. Um, he, I think he'd just been sacked by Sheffield Wednesday, but he did have a traditional history with the club. So uh, had that played a massive part in, in his uh, appointment? It, 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 a little bit, but he it, 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 it was, uh, he'd been at Chef Wednesday. Mm. I think he'd done quite well. I'm, I'm just trying to remember now. It's, yeah. it's quite a while ago. Yeah, I think he was, he'd done really well at Scunthorpe previously. Um, Scunthorpe, that's, that's yeah, correct. Yeah. And, and I think he'd been sacked by Sheffield Wednesday just before Christmas. That's right. I mean, it was the usual thing. Uh, we had to do interview various things and he came over very well. He understood the club. Um, and, you know, from all the candidates, he was the one that I thought, yeah, I think Brian can, can do this. Uh, no, it turned out he, he didn't do very well. Uh, no, there's all sorts of stuff. Did he have... What was the team like? Did we really have the resources to be a successful team, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. Um, but from the candidates, he was the one that seemed to be the one that was best suited for Burnley Football Club. As I've said, it didn't work out, and uh, I think we lost it. It was just on Christmas. I was actually in New York. I had to ring him up from New York and say, "Brian, it's time to go." Um, so it didn't work out, but at the time he seemed the best candidate from the people we had. You can't always get it right, Pete. You know. Yeah, no, no. I, I'm just, I'm just wondering about the process because, <clears throat> excuse me, because um, Owen Carlo come up with a certain playing style, hadn't he? And which was, I think, was built on momentum rather than tactics. Would that, would that be a fair assessment? I think so, yeah. Owen, Owen Coyle was a, a great success and it was so intimidating, devastating. When, uh, you know, he, he, at Christmas time, he said he was going to go to Bolton because um, they, they, they had, they, they had uh, more prospects, a better club than Burnley were. And he took all the staff with him. So he just went, took everybody with him. We were there with absolutely nobody. Uh, you know, of, of higher football management. Uh, so that was a massive blow for us, right out of the blue. Um, and obviously, we went for, for uh, Brian. But he, 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 you know, he was a really good manager. He did have these, his tactics sorted. And he did a great job for Burnley. But the way he left was extremely disappointing. Mm. What, what's, what's, you've, you've had promotion to the Premier League twice. Um, promotion from League One, um, obviously staying up in the Premier League um, with Sean Dyche after two previous failed attempts. So what's your uh, most proudest moment as Burnley chairman, stroke vice chairman? I think you've touched right there, the promotions, like the following season after when I took over, we got out of that third tier of English football. And I might say we've never gone back down to those mm. terrible days when we playing down there in the fourth division and bottom of the third division. Uh, that was a brilliant day when we, 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 we did it and got into the championship. And then you've touched on it there, uh, consolidating, going through things like the ITV Digital, which was a real killer for us. Um, but then the, that famous day when we won at Wembley to get into the Premier League, and perhaps even more, we have been relegated twice from the Premier League, but we've bounced straight back. Mm -hmm. And now we've had, is it five seasons? Maybe four or five, I think. Well, hopefully after next Monday, it'll be six seasons in the Premier League. Well, well, <laughs> this is it now. That, that'll be our sixth. Um, and, you know, I think those promotions and where we are in the leagues compared to where we, we were down there, and looking round at all our Lancashire neighbours, how they've all gone down to the bottom, um, you know, uh, gone into administration, uh, you know, but we've managed to really, I think because we've had the managers, but we thought it right, um, 
So those promotions and, and, and becoming a Premier League club, now we've got to fight it out and keep going. We've still got a battle on this season, as you know, Pete, but mm -hmm. um, I'm so proud of those promotions. And that, that, that day when we went to Wembley and won the, the, uh, the playoff final, and we'd done it after all those years, uh, of, of being out of, of being out of it, I think was in the late seventies. I think maybe the mid seventies when we'd last been yeah, in the top yeah. top division of English football. I don't think I. We have, we've maintained it as well. We have got relegated, but boy, we've, we've damn well come back, and we're mm. still in there. Now we're on a, a good run, and we've been there our longest. That gap, the first gap between you know, Owen Coyle going, and then you know we went through a number of different uh, managers before we got Sean in. Was there a worry at any point that? You know that boat had sailed, and the money had gone from the first Premier League season, and the dust was settling. And obviously, we were, it was almost like going back to tight, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Um, we did obviously uh, have money to invest um, to, to try and rebuild the team. We didn't. We didn't go around debt. You know, where we'd spent all the money that came in on trying to stay in there. I think that's important. I, I used to get criticised for one phrase I always had. I always said, I'll never bet the ranch. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we did have money then to reinvest as we got invested. Perhaps I beg your pardon. Relegated. And we could, you know, build a strong team to be able to bounce back. I think that's one good thing we did as well. Uh, you know, still having those resources to get back to the Premier League and not just sort of fade away down, down the you know, down the, down, down the ladder. And the investment that you and the board made subsequently, uh, Barnfield, for example, how is that going to hold us in good stead as we move forward into the next I decade? I think it's fabulous. It really is. It, 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 Barnfield is now unbelievable. And that's another thing. Don't just try and spend it on another player for 15 million quid who doesn't give a damn and his agents like asking for another five in his pocket. To spend it on Barnfield, and uh, it, it's a fabulous. And it, even the big clubs have come and said, "Wow, this is this is really something." Uh, compared with, with with the old Gothorpe, that yeah. was like you know really mud, not mud huts. You know what I mean? But it was it really was uh, you know antiquated. But it's a fabulous thing, and that's there forever now. We've got mm -hmm. that; it's there. And it's, it'll like attract players, and it's, it's ideal for what we want to be a successful club. Did did Gawthorpe ever cause a problem for, with a player coming in? Did they ever look at the training centre and say, oh, "That's not really for me"? Well, not not that I've, nobody's ever said it to me, but you, you're always a little bit, you know, apprehensive. You know, if somebody's been that I've been at wherever, and they, they come down to this this thing that was built actually in the, in the early 1960s. Mm. Um, so it gives you that extra, you know, that extra field for somebody coming, hmm, decent club, this, that type of thing, for somebody who's, who, who's, who has various options of clubs to go to. And I think it is a very big plus in getting players to come. And my final question today, Barry, if you don't mind, um, it's just about Sean Dyche and his leadership. So how, did you, how do you see his leadership within the club and how do you see that going on from here on in whilst you're no longer um, in the boardroom? Um, I think he's shown, has been a fa obviously a great manager for us. And, uh, you know, uh, he, he's, he, he really has got it, Sean. And he's, he fits in well with the Burnley ethos as well, I feel. You know, he's not like somebody who's been managing Inter Milan or something like that. Um, is a, he truly knows how to get that team going, and I hope he stays as long as he can. Um, if that answers your question, Pete, I, I, you know, um, I really hope he can. He, he really, his, his family is still down in Northampton, etc., mm -hmm. and he comes up and stays in Warley during the week and all this type of thing. Um, but. Sean Dyche has been a fabulous, fabulous appointment and it should take so much credit for where we've been over this last eight years or whatever it is. Cool. Well, thank you very much, Barry. Cheers for today. Much appreciated for your time. Thank you very much. All the best. Bye-bye.